on the evening of July 1st, 2002, two planes collided in mid-air over the town of Überlingen in southern Germany. All 71 passengers and crew aboard both planes lost their lives. The two planes involved were DHL Boeing 757 cargo aircraft and a Bashkirian Airlines Tupolev Tu-154M passenger flight. The DHL Boeing, en route from Bahrain International Airport to Brussels Airport, contained just the two pilots. The Bashkirian Airlines flight was a chartered flight from Moscow to Barcelona, carrying 60 passengers and 9 crew. On board were 46 Russian schoolchildren from the city of Ufa in the Autonomous Republic of Bashkortostan, also known as Bashkiria. The Tupolev departed from Moscow and headed west across Europe, traveling at 36,000 feet, 10,972 meters. At 11.30 p.m. local time, the plane was approaching airspace administered by the air traffic control in Zurich, Switzerland. On this night, Zurich air traffic control was manned by just one controller, Danish-born Peter Nielsen. This was not unusual, since traffic at this time was light, and all nearby major airports had closed for the night. At the facility, it had become common practice for one of the two controllers on duty to take an extended rest in the break room during the middle of the night shift. The second controller took his break at 11.15pm, leaving Nielsen to control the traffic alone. At around 11.20pm, Nielsen instructed DHL Flight 611 to climb to an altitude of 32,000 feet. 9,800 meters. The flight crew then requested a further climb to 36,000 feet, 11,000 meters, to preserve fuel. This request was granted, and the plane reached this altitude just before 11.30 p.m. Meanwhile, Bashkirian Flight 2937 contacted Nielsen at 11.30 p.m., flying at 36,000 feet. While Nielsen acknowledged the plane's position, he did not suggest an alternative altitude, putting both planes on a collision course. At 11.34, one minute before the collision, Nielsen realized the danger and instructed the Russian plane to descend to 35,000 feet to avoid the collision. Seconds after the flight crew initiated the descent, the plane's Traffic Collision and Avoidance System, or TCAS, instead instructed them to climb. At the same time, the TCAS system on board the DHL flight instructed that plane to descend. But why did the Russian crew disregard the instructions of TCAS, instead deferring to the air traffic control instructions? Although traffic collision avoidance systems had been required in the United States since 1993, and in the European Union and Middle East since 2000, at the time of the accident it was not required in Russia. The only reason the Tupolev aircraft had TCAS was so that it could travel to Europe. Its pilots had little training on the system and little experience using it. The flight crew likely had never encountered a traffic alert before, either in training or real life. In fact, guidance issued by the Federal Aviation Administration states that a TCAS advisory should take precedence over instructions from air traffic control. However, in Russia, the regulations were not so clear. The Tupolev Tu-154 operating manual stated the opposite, that air traffic control should take precedence, and TCAS advice should only be followed if no contact has been made with air traffic control. Due to the confusion, both planes were now descending. Eight seconds before the collision, Flight 2937's crew gained visual sight of DHL Flight 611 on their left-hand side. In response, Flight 611 increased its descent. Two seconds before collision, the Russian pilots finally obeyed the TCAS instruction to climb, but it was too late. The two aircraft collided at 11.35 p.m. at an angle of almost 90 degrees, at an altitude of 34,890 feet, 10,630 meters. DHL Flight 611's vertical stabilizer sliced completely through the fuselage of Baskerian Flight 2937, just ahead of its wings. Flight 2937 broke into several pieces, scattering wreckage over a wide area. The nose section of the plane fell vertically, 
while the tail section continued forward until the engine stalled, then fell to the ground. Flight 611, now missing 80% of its vertical stabilizer, struggled for a further 7 kilometers, 4 miles, before crashing into a wooded area. Each engine ended up several meters away from the main wreckage, and the tail section was torn from the fuselage by trees prior to impact. The disaster highlighted issues within the Swiss air traffic control system. Until 2001, this had been run by the state. It was then privatized and run by a company called Skyguide. The practice of leaving one controller on duty while the other rested was in fact against company guidelines, but had been tolerated by management. In addition, the ground-based optical collision warning system, which would have alerted the controller of an impending collision over two minutes before it happened, was switched off for maintenance. This was unknown to controller Nielsen. The official investigation by the German Federal Bureau of Aircraft Accident Investigation, also known as the BFU, highlighted these issues along with confusion regarding the TCAS alerts. In the aftermath, Skyguide agreed to pay compensation to the families of the victims. On August 7, 2006, a Swiss prosecutor filed manslaughter charges against eight employees of Skyguide. Three of the four managers convicted were given suspended prison sentences, and the other ordered to pay a fine. In May 2007, Bashkirian Airlines ceased to operate. Air traffic controller Peter Nielsen, although not officially found responsible for the collision, was devastated and had to be treated for post-traumatic stress disorder. A Russian man named Vitaly Kaloyev, who had lost his wife and two children at the end of the disaster, held Nielsen personally responsible. On the 24th of February 2004, he arrived at Nielsen's house and stabbed him to death. A Swiss court sentenced Kalayev to eight years in prison for manslaughter, citing diminished responsibility. He was released just two years later after pressure from the Russian government, who deemed the sentence as too harsh under the circumstances. <laughs>